It is really just amazing to me that Ford can create such a product that can basically be stock and come down here and go 80, 90, 100 miles an hour off-road and be pretty stable overall. You can see it on the videos, but until you actually experience it in real life, you almost can't describe it. To bring people here for the first time, like a lot of the customers are on this trip, it's very enjoyable to see their eyes open up and go, wow, I didn't even know that some place like this exists. It's just one of those places that you just want to stay forever and it gets in your blood and once it's in there, you, you can't get it out. If you want to come down here, I, I don't know how you could do it on your own really, and see all the stuff that we've seen. We've seen mountains, deserts, beaches, pine trees. It's very unique for us to go on an off-roading trip and experience so many different types of terrain. I think this is by far the best off-roading trip I've ever been on because of that. If this trip is on your bucket list at all, then you definitely need to check it off your bucket list. You have to come. Any driver, any co-driver, don't be nervous. This is an, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country with wonderful people, and you have to check it off the list. Baja Raptor Run is a um, gathering of raptors we bring down to Baja to let people experience Baja for the first time in a, in a safe and fun environment. The group of guys that I've got that help put this thing on have got a lot of Baja experience, so we're able to provide guests a, a really fun, safe time, and they get to experience all the Bajas it has to offer. I'm a big car guy, big off-roader, really enjoy going fast and doing things that are a little dangerous. And over the last few years, I would say last five years, really spent a lot of time looking for the next adventure. And Baja just drew me here, and it seemed like this was a logical step and then went online and really looked at YouTube videos, found Baja Raptor runs, and immediately knew that's the place I want to be. Those are the guys I want to run with. So signed up for the trip and came here. We saw some videos on the internet, but this has been overwhelming. It's been way better than the YouTubes. So for me, in the Raptor, it's, uh, it's a dream come true. First of all, I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, I know that you guys all traveled a long ways to get here. We're gonna have an excellent, amazing time. Baja is absolutely the best place in the world. The key things that, that you need to take away are be respectful of the country and the people, drive within your limits, and have fun. We're gonna have a great time. This place is amazing, but it'll get you quick. Interesting to be crossing over the border in such an expensive vehicle. <laughs> a little bit nervous, but um, it, was, it was all so smooth. It was totally unexpected. It wasn't anything like what I thought it might be like. Maybe 20 minutes into it, we're on dirt and we're going fast already. Within a couple hours, we're, we're driving through pine tree forests and crossing rivers and it's just awesome stuff. And we're getting to run part of the Baja 500, the Baja 1000 and all these different uh, race courses that I've always seen on TV and, and loved. So I got pretty pumped uh, to come through there and see that. It was, it was you know, kind of goosebumps and exciting. I uh, went up to a place called Mike's Sky Ranch, which I freaking loved who and how and why they built that, where they did. It's unbelievable if you've, if you've never had the chance to see it. Um, that was probably just straight out of the gate the coolest thing. It was quite an experience because the roads were just dirt roads. You had no guard railings on the side. You were trying to take it easy. You were feeling out how fast to go. You wanted to keep up with the other trucks, but you didn't want to drive dangerously. It was a great learning experience on the first day. So there was a little competition at the swimming pool. I was asked to do a pike uh, and I uh, did not do it well at first. Um, but yeah, we got some flips in, some th other things. The cannonball that got a lot of people wet and things like that. It's a lot of fun. Grew up with a swimming pool and it's a lot of fun to get back in the pool and, and, and enjoy that with people. And I watched the guys jumping into the pool and it was a little bit too cold for me. So I skipped jumping into the pool. 
it was hot when we got to Mike's. It's been hot this whole trip, but at Mike's it was hot and we all decided it would be a good idea to jump in the pool. The water was substantially colder than it should have been. It was freezing. It's cold. <laughs> it's like swimming pool in winter cold. <laughs> and I think there was a few jump contests that went down and uh, everyone ended up getting splashed a little bit. It was fun. Pool water was a little bit cool. I wasn't subject myself to that, but I, I had fun watching it. <laughs> I want to thank everybody that um that got me here and uh, all my fans. Thank you. I think it lets people also know kind of who's gonna be the ones that are gonna be uh, doing some crazy things or having a lot of fun, and those that aren't. So it was a good start to the trip. So we're gonna go down the highway a little ways and get on the Diablo lake bed. The lake bed's really fun and fast, but things come up really quick. So uh, I think everyone did a really awesome job yesterday with marking corners. I think that went well. We're gonna keep that process going. Just remember there's always a chance of oncoming traffic or traffic getting between us. You always have to expect a, a horse or a cow or a car around the next corner. Day two, we drove out onto this amazing lake bed just for miles and miles, just a dry, flat lake bed. You could really hammer your Raptor to see how fast you could go on it, and it was pretty amazing. When we got to the dry lake bed, we really cruised into kind of this high-speed run through the lake bed. Uh, really neat to have all the trucks kind of staggered out and spaced out as we're going through the lake bed and, and going at high speed. It was the first time, I think, that for a lot of us, you're going nearly flat out on the truck and it really showed, okay, this truck can handle dirt at extreme high speeds. Got a, a good stretch to open up the Jeep and really hit it hard. I think we were averaging about 65 miles an hour, so that was pretty good. And then immediately transitioned into the lake bed. We got to open them up and, and really get after it. Um, that was fun. He did step on the gas, which did frighten me because, you know, we're not used to that. You know, he just went and put the foot and went. It was scary, but fun. That was probably one of my favorite drives was the from the road to the lake bed. You're getting a little more used to your truck and learning what it can do and what you can do with it. And uh, it, it, was, it was really interesting to see. You know, I mean, there used to be water there. You're in the middle of a desert and that used to be a lake. Getting out was a little bit interesting as we, I guess the way we wanted to go still had some water in it. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. I liked that road. We had originally planned multiple trips in 2020 and one of them was gonna be a uh, Jeep trip in the fall. I had told uh, this buddy of mine, Bubba from Exodus Jeeps, if he got like six or seven Jeeps together, we'll put together a trip and we can have an exclusive Jeep trip. And he, he got all the guys together and as COVID hit and everything, some of their guys dropped out. So I said, hey, I've got these people from April that paid for a trip we couldn't go in April. Do you mind combining it with your Jeep guys and we'll just make it one big trip? And I asked him, I said, you all gonna be able to keep up? He's like, oh yeah, we got this, no problem. Last year we decided we wanted to come on the uh, Texas Raptor run with Trey and his crew because I saw the video that he posted out and it was excellent. It looked really exciting and just thought it'd be awesome to bring some Jeeps down here and give it a shot, see how they would perform. We met up with Trey and planned out trying to come down here with a bunch of Jeeps. So the Jeeps have been a lot of fun. Uh, I think there's been a lot of ribbing back and forth between the Jeep guys and the Raptor guys, but they've held up surprisingly well and, and some of the guys drive pretty quick. Just wish they had bigger gas tanks, but uh, it's been fun having them on the trip. And again, new people have never experienced Ba. They did have to show us up a few times when they crawled over rocks and boulders and things, but you know, it's been fun having them here. Powered by Red Bull. Red Bull number one. We're drinking Red Bull. <laughs> Morning to evening, we're drinking all the Red Bull. You name the flavors watermelon, coconut, blueberry, Arctic winter, just in case you're here for the seasonal fair. But, anyways, Red Bull number one. Also, TRR. Hudson's in the back. We got Noggle. We got good Eric. We got the whole staff, and we're ready to eat some tacos. One love. Peace out. After we left San Felipe, we headed south. To our, towards our destination of Bahia de Los Angeles for the night. And along the way, we stopped at uh, Laguna Persibu to go down to the beach 
Uh, and again, the high tide was very evident at the beach camp there. Uh, we stopped there and had lunch under the Palapas and uh, got our first taste of the Sea of Cortez. Day three is my favorite and least favorite day of the trip because it's a lot of dirt, it's a lot of remote locations, it's not easy to get to if we need support. It's rough and then it gets fun. So like you have to deal with a bunch of rough stuff and it gets fun. But one of the best things is like a couple miles into the dirt, there's a big old Vado. And a Vado is like a concrete wash that they put across a dirt road or any road to prevent erosion. And if you hit them fast enough, you can get some pretty good air. And a couple guys, Got a little more than they expected this year. It was, it was pretty neat to see and watch. Christian's an animal. If you hear Christian or Surf Pro, it, that's him. And uh, he, you know, hit the Vado at a speed that I would not, and many of us wouldn't. His truck is built a little differently, a little bit more for that. And uh, he hit the Vado, got a little nose heavy as he was coming out of it, but he recovered it just fine and, and continued on, which is even more spectacular than the fact that he, he hit it that hard. I don't know what he tried to do, but that guy's uh, rear end was eight feet in the air. I think it was a little more than he expected. I mean, he stopped to ask him, how'd your jump go? And he opened the door and everything just fell out of the, the truck. It's like, oh, okay, that was, it was that kind of jump. <laughs> Holy shit. We had a little bit of uh, time on the beach during our lunch at Playa San Rafael and we happened to bring along some golf balls and uh, golf clubs. Tested the skills of some of the people to see how they could swing a club and how far they could drive a ball out into the water. You know, Mark Noggle has a habit of always having a sack of balls in his truck and a golf club strapped somewhere to the cage. So on this trip we actually ended up with a few more clubs, a few other people brought clubs and a whole bunch of golf balls. So. I don't think I've had a golf ball in maybe three years. So we all decided we were gonna throw some balls out on the beach and, and test it out. And I remember why I don't play golf. Um, the guys had tons of fun. They took out their golf clubs and they just went away. Um, my husband does play golf, so you know he did outshine a few of the guys, but it was all fun and games. They saw my hit and they were amazed. They're like, what? He goes, that's, I, I play golf. Doing it in the beach, I never done that. And, and uh, it was pretty awesome. We really had a great opportunity to hang out on the beach, back our trucks up, get a photo opportunity. A few people decided that they'd get a little aggressive in the sand and, and ended up getting stuck and getting pulled out. Uh, but sand's a unique experience too. If you've never driven on sand, it's all about momentum. Uh, you don't want to be hard on the throttle and then pulling off. Uh, you really want to be consistent with your throttle, maintain speed and move through. And Christian, you know, he's got a heavy foot. So what did he do? He gets on the, the throttle too much, ends up burying his truck in the sand and getting pulled out. Christian has always bragged about the, being the fastest driver in Baja. Well, that doesn't mean he's got the most skills. He pulled onto the beach, right, immediately got shot. stuck, and then to make the situation worse, he buried the truck up to the frame. I felt like if I put it on the frame rails, it'd be a great example, a great lesson learned for future teams so they know to put it in four wheel drive when you get to the beach. Obviously, when you're fastest driver in Baja, you carry more, more, more momentum, and you don't have the need for four-wheel drive always, but uh, sometimes you get out here, sometimes you go a little bit faster than everybody, and your tires just spin so fast, you dig bigger holes. What happens? No picture! No! We always stop by the Locust Mocus Memorial, and it is this big steel and concrete memorial that lays flat up on top of this hillside where we would traditionally do a pit. 
Uh, you wouldn't know it's there unless you knew it was there. And this year we had quite a few people that were part of Locust Mocus and part of the reason that I go to Baja there with us. Baja Jones, his wife Denise, Tom, and Mark Noggle. I've seen all the Locos Mocos signs, but I didn't really quite understand the history. And then Mr. Noggle started talking to us about the history, started talking to us about the memorial, why it was there, and those that the memorial was supposed to be honoring. There is items that have been placed around as memorials. About half of Bubbles' ashes are also in the concrete. The rest of them are spread on the Sea of Cortez. We've also lost uh, another member, so we're gonna add another plaque today for Larry Z, who came down on a couple of Locos Mocos pits. So this is the first plaque that we've added since we poured this thing originally. So I felt very privileged to be able to see, hear the history of the memorial, and be a part of it. I've had heard about the memorial before, but you know, it was something that these guys were really passionate about. And so I think for them and their families and their friends to be able to be memorialized down here, close to something that they loved is, uh, I think that's a, a really important memorial for them and their friends to be able to appreciate what they enjoy doing and uh, in a place that they love coming to. Later in the day, we ended up at the cave paintings. What a unique experience. You're out in the middle of literally nowhere. We never saw a soul for probably an hour or two before that or an hour or two after that. And we hiked up to these cave paintings and there's these very unique cave paintings that from what I learned, were here before the Aborigines. And so these are very, very old paintings and they have got six fingers. They've got little weird wings that are coming off their backs. Some of them have horns. Uh, and they're multiple different colors. It took me a while to get there. I stopped halfway. Um, I thought I wasn't going to make it, but I, everybody kept telling me it, it was worth it. Getting to the top was worth it. Once I was up there, it was beautiful. The view was amazing. Somebody said there was a book that they read that had uh, somebody, you know, settled around there in the 1600s and said that the natives said that that was there before they even got there. So I mean, that's been there for who knows how long. Just, just stunning. I mean, you know, who else? has the ability to ever go up there and see that unless you're out here with this truck with this group of people. You can tell that they don't get visited very much. There's no graffiti there. No one really gets to see them. So to get to take people to see those paintings that a few people a year get to see, uh, it's, it's really neat. And they've been there forever. And they, because of where they are, they're going to be there for a long time. You see the paintings and it's, it's just with six fingers. And you're like, well, it's like six fingers. And it's like, little animals and it's little images and it's just amazing that if it's been there for hundreds of years so you have this this really cool cave art on one side and you turn around and you're looking out over this vista with the mountains and the valley it was uh, one of my favorite views of the trip i think After COVID, everything's been pretty tough in the United States, and I can only imagine and know that it's been just as tough, if not a lot tougher, here in Baja. So it was nice to come down and support all these local businesses, because I don't think they've got a little, lot of business, so everyone was super excited to see us, and I'm really glad we came down. We stopped at a little gift store, and the lady was telling us that uh, they've been closed for a couple months, and when we bought, I think, uh, some souvenirs, she kind of wanted to tear up. It's hard, it, and it's like everybody. It's 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 difficult for everybody right now. And seeing her kind of it, it hit me because they have a family to feed too, and it kind of hurt. You go know, seeing her pray, and like, when she got the money, she prayed and she kissed it, and she's like, "For good luck." He goes, "We've been bad and struggling, and." we gotta come and support small business. It was something that just kind of hits you and you're like, it opens your eyes that people do, he goes, people are struggling here and in the US. And, uh, but whatever I can do to help, it was, I'm gonna do it. One of the real rewarding pleasures of coming to Baja is being able to share our experiences with the, with the locals. They've always welcomed us with open arms and we really appreciate them welcoming us there. So we do what we can to return the favor, make sure that we buy local, that we uh, visit as many places as we can for eating and drinking so that uh, we try to bring a little bit more back into the economy. 
the kids come by and see us as we drive into town with just open eyes. Just they are so amazed about our big trucks and how fast we drive and everything else. And so we make sure that we uh, pay a little more attention to them, give them stickers, uh, maybe some candy, big smiles on their face, and it's very rewarding. Um, there was a vendor actually on the side um, who was selling knickknacks, um, keychains, magnets. Um, she did tell us that due to COVID, um, she had been out since about March. Um, so the locals told her we were going to be in town and she brought whatever she had. I mean, we did purchase some items from her, you know, to help her out as far as, you know, taking a trip and it was just something to take back home with us. I'm pretty excited to see everyone from Texas Raptor Room come into town. It's been rough times since COVID, but we're pretty excited to have everyone in town supporting the locals. And thank you guys for coming. See you guys next time. On the way down, we stopped at San Ro Rosalia. It's a copper and sulfur mining town right on the water. Oldest operating bakery in North America, possibly. The story is they lit the fires in the 1800s and they've been going ever since. Obviously, don't speak a lot of Spanish myself, so uh, I believe it was Bubba or one of the, I can't remember who it was, said just take pictures of what you want and go to the counter. So that's what I did. I was like, this one, this two, this three. This stuff is incredible. As a matter of fact, I still have a bag of uh, cookies <laughs> in the Jeep that I've been eating on. <laughs> yeah, that, that bakery was awesome. Um, we kind of snuck our cameras around the side and took some pictures of the inside of it, but uh, ah, just amazing food. It was really, really good. The bread was amazing. Um, I'm Hispanic, so sweet bread to me is good. Um, the other people, you know, are, you know, that came with us, they didn't know what sweet bread was and they loved it. So that was good, that was amazing. Playa Recazón is one of the interesting geological features. It, it's sometimes an island, it's sometimes a peninsula, and sometimes it's just a little place where you can relax on the beach. There's water on both sides of it. Uh, when the tide comes up, the island becomes an island and is separated from the mainland. When the tide goes out, you can drive out to the island on the sand. Not many more places like that that I've been to. Always has locals in it. There's a taco stand there. Somebody's coming around to sell fresh fruit or refreshments or beverages and uh, it becomes a little party out there on the, on the sand. Pretty amazing to see that all the white sand that we had there and we had lunch there with all the raptors lined up and it was pretty amazing to see all the different trucks be able to eat lunch there on that beach and take in all the sights. The one thing that's really cool about Baja is a lot of the beaches have mountains all around them. And coming from Houston the water in Galveston is really not that great, but so you come up here and see these nice clean beaches with this cool, clear blue water. Uh, that's something that I'm not familiar with and it was something I really appreciate. Our group, we, we kind of just grouped up as the Jeeps at the end just because we, we had some uh, stuff to take care of ourselves. On our way south, we uh, there was a guy stopped on the side of the road, uh, needed some help and people were just driving by him. So came over this hill and you know, Bubba saw Bubba slam on the brakes. He pulled off the road, then Pat did and I did, and it was a guy on the side of the road that had a flat tire and he couldn't get it broke loose. But we had all of our tools for the Jeep, so we got him jacked up, had an impact wrench, got it, changed it like, it was actually like a pit crew, it was kind of fun. I didn't do much of it, I videoed most of it, but. Uh, the guy who gives us some tamarino with some the chili powder stuff on it as, a, as his gratitude for us helping him out. But that felt good, just helping some, some local out and Got back in and, and rolled in Loretto and filled up with gas again and and uh, showed up at the hotel. Today we were able to visit San Caballero Mission and it was amazing. It was on the top of this hill and it was really an old mission. We were able to go inside and talk to the caretaker who explained the history of the mission. And we got to see what um, is presumably the oldest olive tree in North America, maybe even South America. It's beautiful, we walked down in there, we bought some candies off of a vendor, and then just pulling up into that, up in the mountain and seeing that oasis that was up there in a way, was awesome. It was really nice that they had somebody in there that kind of explained the history of the, of the mission. 
and we were able to go in and appreciate it because the, the inside of it was really had some really cool uh, paintings and then back behind it they had an olive tree that is said to be the oldest olive tree in North America at about 400 years old think about how old that tree was and you know because it predates the mission that was there and uh, think about the people that were here at that time and then the people that were here through, through the mission. The architecture is just absolutely amazing that this was built by hand and the setting around it is just spectacular. It's one of the most picturesque mission areas that I've been to in Baja. The mountains tower above it and it's very green all the time. The local people there are, were nice to us. Um, the guy that was inside the church uh, giving us explanation of you know everything we've asked he had an answer for. It was really nice. So one of the fun things about Baja is the things you kind of collect along the way. And you know, it's a vacation, even even though we're here working, like, so you, you, you kind of change your mentality a little bit on stuff. And it's like, well, you know what? I do want to buy a sombrero today. And you know what? I want it to have tassels. So yeah, let's buy a sombrero. Found one I liked. Of course, another guy found the same one. He got it first, but then I found the same hat at another store, got a better deal on it even. So it all, it all worked out, yeah, but you tend to kind of collect little trinkets down here over the years and I always joke like they never really leave my truck so every time you come down here you'll dig in a pocket and you'll find a rock or a shell that you collected last time and it just all sort of stays as part of, you know, part of the memories of, the, of coming down here. The dirt today was very rough. It was very nice but it was very rough. A lot of rock and a lot of bumps but uh, it was well worth it. headed down one of my favorite trails in Baja. We go downhill from that, headed towards the Pacific side on just a great ranch road. It's uh, twisty and turning, has a bunch of water crossings and uh, different geography. It's my favorite trail in Baja. The first a couple of miles off road really were, were pretty nice, a little bit of technical turns, but uh, you know, some ranches we had to slow down for. And then it got bumpy. <laughs> My truck's not super modified, so I was getting rattled around pretty bad, but uh, we got it done. The truck, again, it held up better than I did. I felt like I had a concussion when I was done with it, but uh, it, it was bumpy. Took it up and asked for more. drove out the backside of San Javier. It's a good fun dirt road and it was really fun. It was fast and smooth and we had a lot of fun on that road and took it all the way into the pavement and then we went down to La Parisma and crossed over on race course backwards San Juanico and it was rough and gnarly but everyone seemed to have a good time and then we hung out that night in San Juanico and enjoyed the, the cooler weather there. The camaraderie down here is great with Baja Raptor Runs. It's a good mix of people. We've got people from Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, California. To bring that type of people together takes a lot of planning, takes a lot of logistics, and I think that Trey and his team have really done a great job of doing that. Yeah, there's things that are gonna happen here and there, but we've handled it with professionalism, with a team atmosphere. So when we've had flat tires or we've had a situation where a tie rod's gone down, everybody's asking if they can help and uh, then moving on. And we've been able to get those repairs done quickly. And then at night, uh, we're enjoying time, having a few drinks with each other, spending time with each other, going out to dinner, and we're all talking about our trucks for sure, but we're also just talking about each other's families and what we do for a living and what allows us to come and get here, and you find commonality among those people that are here uh, to do it. I do really think that after this trip there's going to be some friends that will continue to persist, and I'm excited to, to see what the future holds if we go on additional runs together. Uh, you might know a few people, but you get down here and you start to experience things together and over the course of the trip, you bond really well and you get to make some really lifelong friends. It's really interesting to 
meet these people from all over the country and, and you share a lot of similarities, but sometimes you can be very, very different, but still you bond really well on these trips. It's pretty cool. When you first come over, um, you don't know anybody and you don't know what to think. And three of us came with Jeeps, not really bringing the typical Raptor vehicle. Everybody's being pretty cool with us. There's a lot of ribbing and razzing going on between the two. But at the end of the day, if anybody has any issues, um, whatever, it's a teamwork that gets it done and gets you down the road. So you know these guys are, are your brothers down here or, and your sisters in some case, and they're gonna get you through the deal. So when we got here um, the first day on Tuesday, we didn't know any other people on the trip except for a few um, return guests on the trip from the videos that we watched on YouTube. But now that the six or seven days have passed, we've all become really close and everybody helps each other out and um, everybody is there to support every, each other and, and encourage everybody to have the best time that they can have. To bring people here for the first time, like a lot of the customers are on this trip, it's very enjoyable to see their eyes open up and go, wow, I didn't even know that someplace like this exists. And they begin to pick up the appreciation that we have for Baja and get the understanding that it's a, that it's a different type of world. It offers so much more and so much different from what we, we normally see in our daily lives. For those people to experience that for the first time is uh, watching a new love develop. You know, you don't know anybody's names, but at least you know you have trucks in common. You've at least got enjoyment of some type of motorsport. You still have a brotherhood almost between everybody that, um, you know, you get to meet and spend time with people while you're eating and, you know, hanging out in between, you know, sessions. And we've developed a lot of good friendships. It is really just amazing to me that Ford can create such a product that can basically be stock and come down here and go 80, 90, 100 miles an hour off-road and pretty be pretty stable overall. My build for my truck has been phenomenal this trip. Willing to rotate into turns and shoot me out of them. Drifting through turns has been really easy. Stable on high speed runs where it's deep sand or uh, loose soil. Over rocks and things like that, it's just soaked them up and really allowed us to take advantage of the power that we've got in this truck. Uh, and accelerate out of it. At no point have we thought, oh my gosh, we're, we're in over our heads here uh, with the truck. Uh, additionally, we've had a lot of opportunity to get some air. And as we've been getting air, we've been really impressed with how the truck takes off, lands flat, and really just allows us to enjoy being in the air for a split second and, and feeling that uh, weightlessness in the truck, having it come down solid and just shooting right out of there. The Raptor stock, which is basically what I'm running, I have lights on it, and it has been holding up remarkably well. Even after going through the rough terrain, I don't get on the highway again and have a bunch of rattles and everything. It's held up temperature-wise. For a stock Raptor, you don't need to do any anything more to it. It, it ate up the road. buy the truck you got to use it for what it's built for uh, anybody can drive on a street and look pretty but to be able to come down here and actually put it through its paces until you do that you never really know what the thing's capable of doing even after being down here for five days every time I get out of the truck I'm still surprised that it got me where I am and it's still purring away just like it was the second I left home uh, it's it's just been a great truck think that there's another vehicle that's made that could do the stuff that we've done with these trucks the last couple of days. That's my first time I've had a couple of hard hits on the front left suspension and you get back out on the road and it tracks straight. I don't have any wiggle in the steering column. I mean, it, the truck can handle more than I can handle. <laughs> it's, it's been an absolute beast and I, I can't say enough how impressed I am with it. 
One of the things that has come out of all of these trips and everything was that uh, Hudson and I started an off-road shop in New Braunfels called uh, Kamal Truck Gear. We saw a need to build high quality trucks that could come to Baja and not break and it wasn't really being filled so we decided it'd be a good idea to start a shop and start building these trucks that could handle everything the Baja threw at them. And we had five trucks down here that we either built or prepped and every single one of them made the trip with no problems at all. So something I'm really proud of. And uh, you know, we're using our experience from Baja to build trucks the right way, and our experience uh, with prepping race cars and racing to build trucks the right way. We've got you know, we've got a good system, and uh, you know, make trucks to hold up for for Baja. Um, a few years ago, Cherry and I came together and decided that we wanted to start a shop for ourselves and that came about because we were doing these trips and we saw a need for trucks that were properly prepped, properly equipped, well put together and reliable. Nobody wants to come down here and spend hours fixing things and um, we had a lot of people that felt the same way and so we decided, you know what, if there's a lot of people interested in it, we'll go ahead and do it. So that's how the shop started. We've been doing it for a little over two years now. We have some really good customers. We built some cool stuff. Most importantly, it's well put together and reliable and I think these trips are kind of a test of our skills and what we do at the shop and I can't think of a better test than to come down here and you know beat on trucks for 1500 miles and eight days straight. One of the neatest things about this particular trip was the fact that we brought so many new people. Uh, almost everyone on the trip had never ever been to Baja before and to get to watch them experience all the things that Baja has to offer for the first time it, it's really neat. I, you don't get jaded by, by Baja, you never do, but you do get kind of like, it's not as exciting as the first time. I mean, there's always places that are new and ways to make it exciting, but to get to watch people come the first time and see everything for the first time, uh, it's really neat. My co-driver had never been before and uh, he had an awesome time and, and really enjoyed it. And it was fun to watch him see it all for the first time. When you drive your truck every day to or from work or you drive it off-roading in Colorado where I live or in Texas or in Oklahoma or in California, I think we think this is what we can do, what we're capable of, but then you get down here with some experienced people like Trey and Noggle and you see how quickly they go and just how hard they can push the truck and you start to push your limit just a little bit more. You then realize that what your capability is as a driver. For me, I've really been surprised by the build that I've put together on my truck and then my ability to push the truck to a level that I, didn't, I wasn't sure it was capable of doing. The trip is more than just a Baja Raptor run. I mean, it's getting to know your truck. It's getting to know all the settings in the truck. The roads aren't like what I'm used to. They're different and they change at any moment. It's been a, a learning experience from day one. I have nothing bad to say about it. It's just, uh, it's just been a fun overall experience. I highly recommend it. If anybody is thinking about trying to go on a Baja Rep run, do it, and do it earlier. Uh, we come all the way from Texas to, to come to Baja, and, and that's how great of a place it is. It's a long drive, it's 20 hours to get here, and it's worth it every time. I, the drive home's the worst, but there's a lot of reasons why. It's because you, you don't want to leave, you don't want to leave the adventure and the fun that's down here. It's just one of those places that you just want to stay forever. And five more miles of dirt and five more miles of Baja, and uh, that's why you come back, because you just want to get it again. It's, it's just, it gets in your blood and, and that's it. Once, once it's in there, you, you can't get it out. I'd be lying if I said I didn't get nervous first couple days, just always worried someone's, something bad's gonna happen. But you know, we had a great group of people and it, it's been a fun, safe trip, so I'm, I'm excited for that. The staff has been uh, amazing. They've been really, really helpful for us uh, when we had issues with the vehicle. Um, they, they jumped right in and they had a plan to get us safely to the next town to make repairs or to make repairs on the spot. They've been really, really prepared as far as us being able to weld. Uh, there was a suitcase welder in the truck. I didn't think that was gonna be there, but it was, and we were able to make the repairs that we needed. So that's a great example of how prepared the staff is. They have a game plan in place in case something went wrong. 
uh, to get us in and out safely. I can't say enough for Trey and Hudson and, and uh, even Mark and you know, Christians helped me out quite a bit too. None of this would be possible if you didn't have a guy like Trey that cared enough to set all this up ahead of time. Anybody could take your money to have you follow him, but he cares enough to go ahead, call out, hey, watch out for this rock, watch out for this hazard. Could you come down here and drive? Yeah, but you'd get lost. Trey takes time to make sure that you know what you're doing and then you get where you're going. And he's just an awesome guy. His staff's been great. Yeah, if you want to come down here, I, I don't know how you could do it on your own really and see all the stuff that we've seen. I wouldn't know where the roads were. I wouldn't know what hotels to stay in. Everybody here is super friendly. I might feel safer here than I felt in a lot of American cities, to be honest with you. You feel like you have this group of people that keep you in line, keep you in check, and, and are there to support you and make sure that you have a good time. So it gives you that comfort that you're not gonna get coming down here by yourself. Baja always teaches us something new, and I've learned new things on this trip also. It's a different way of doing things, but it's a way that that people have found to get things done. It offers so much to everybody. If you like the beach, if you like the mountains, if you like the desert, uh, if you like the food, there's so many varieties of good food here. And every place you go has something just a little bit different from the, what you're used to. It's primitive and we go days without having cell service. And it becomes very, very rewarding not to have being bothered by your electronic advice. Landscape in Baja is always changing. So you go from town to town to town and it's a different vegetation, different uh, topography. Some days you're up in the mountains, some days you're down in the, in the desert valley, some days you're next to the coast. Uh, and so that's one thing that's, that I think is really different. And also it's, you're moving a lot more because uh, you know, normally you're just doing a loop at TRR, which is great, but here you're constantly moving to a different location every day, which is uh, also great. This trip is not just for men and a group of guys. It is definitely an adventure. It's a great time. Women can have great fun too, especially as co-drivers as well. All of the cities that we go to have lots to offer and lots of fun things. Very much women are welcome to come on the trip as well with their drivers. Um, I would definitely recommend men could bring their wives along. It's a beautiful experience for a couple. Um, all the places we've stayed at are amazing. Being co-pilot is actually not that bad. You know, you, you're feel like one of the guys, which is amazing because they don't make you feel any less. You learn along the way and they help you. So it's, it's pretty cool. So you should do it. <laughs>see it on the videos but until you actually experience it in real life you almost can't describe it I and mean, the people that you pass are waving and excited that you're there and the places have been so hospitable and friendly when you get there everybody's been great the, the drivers that you're with are, are awesome you guys gotta experience this whatever state or country you come from it's like I, rem I recommend everybody to come and experience it and hopefully Trey says that I could come every year. If everything goes well, I'm here every year. If you've ever thought about coming down to Baja to share in this experience, Trey and those guys really, really, they, they have it down. Like they know exactly what needs to be done. They know exactly where they're going all the time. That's so important when you go on a trip like this that you don't have to worry about what's gonna happen. Like you just come down here, sit back and enjoy the ride because they have everything figured out and they know exactly where to take you so that you get the best experience possible. If this trip is on your bucket list at all, then you definitely need to check it off your bucket list. You have to come. Any driver, any co-driver, don't be nervous. This is an, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country with wonderful people and you have to check it off the list. I love ice cream and I do my best at home not to eat ice cream very often, but when we're in Mexico, there's no rules. When you start hitting your stride and you're the fastest driver in Baja, um, <laughs> that's when you need to double check. <laughs> this is Peter. If you can see, this is Peter. Just, like I said, you make new friends. He's from Colorado.
follow him. Follow. Follow. El Natural. Did you see good hockey? Just dig down. Yeah, no, it's perfect. You got more traction. See, look at this. Look at this. 